welcome to my first tutorial on Adobe Premiere Pro CC 2017. Today I'm going to be sharing with you the importance of velocity in Premiere Pro. And this is actually something I didn't know how to do until a couple weeks ago. And I really didn't look up any tutorial for it. I really didn't do my research on how it works. I just kind of figured it out and um, messed around with it. And now that I know how it works, now I can share with you what my opinion is on why it's important for you to know how to do this. So start out with, I'm gonna put in some black video here. Um, 25 frames, it's fine. Drag it in here. Now we got some black video. Looks like we got five seconds of black video. Um, we're gonna get some text in here. I'm just gonna say hello. And I'm gonna increase the size a little bit. Oops, that'll be it. Uh, I'm gonna expand this a little bit just because I can't see all that well. There we go. And uh, I'm going to move it roughly. That's about right. So now that we got text, I'm gonna show you a little bit about what I'm talking about when I say velocity. If you're familiar with Adobe After Effects, then you know what I'm talking about when I say velocity. If you don't know how to use velocity in After Effects, or if you never used it, or you've never heard of it, then this should, this is the tutorial for you, you're about to learn. What velocity basically is, in terms of what, when we're talking about um, velocity in Premiere Pro and After Effects, uh, it is a feature in After Effects. It is easier to use in After Effects, in my opinion. Uh, not as many people know that you can also do it in Premiere Pro, since the reason why I didn't know it was even possible in here until I went to go find it. I, I was like, oh, I find it hard to believe. I was in the middle of making a lyric video and I was like, I find it hard to believe that Premiere Pro wouldn't have this because the alternate, the alternative, if you wanted to do velocity would be like, you would have to render whatever video you want, render it as a MP4 or something, put it in Adobe After Effects and then add the lyrics in Adobe After Effects and then apply velocity uh, in the graph editor and change change the velocity in after effects and i was like that's just incredibly inefficient it's got to be in premiere pro it has to be if it's not then i'm gonna complain <laughs> i'm gonna ask them to add that i i eventually found it in this program after looking around for it and it's actually in these drop down things right here you see these little arrows beside um each controller position scale rotation anti-flicker filter opacity these all have their own little drop down menus and if you go here i'm actually going to drag this back since we um need this little area over here and i'm going to drag this this way this is where you're going to be seeing the graphs for the velocity and the reason you don't see any graphs there right now is because we haven't added keyframes which is why we need to add a little bit of motion to this text right now so we're gonna mess with the position. We're not gonna mess with the scale right now. We're gonna mess with the position. So we're gonna keyframe the position. And now you see some of these don't have these drop down menus right before uh, before you even add keyframes. Um, for the ones like if you wanted to keyframe position and then add velocity, and you realize that there's no drop down, and you're like, hey, what's the deal here? Why 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 aren't there no uh, drop downs for velocity for these controllers? Uh, you just have to actually add a keyframe first. So now we have a keyframe which we did by just hitting this and uh, we'll go to uh, maybe like the middle and we'll, um, oh yeah, well, first of all, this has to be going somewhere and drag this off screen. So maybe like, like negative 600 or something. Yep. That's good. Then you drag this in the middle and we'll put it back to what it was, which was 1080. And it looks like I centered it just perfectly. I don't know how that happened. That was amazing. 1080, 720. That's wow. I just realized that. <laughs> okay. So, so now if we play this back, it it uh moves its position based on our keyframes that we just set. So this since this is set at negative six hundred, it's gonna be over here. And uh since this keyframe is set to ten eighty, it's gonna move it from this keyframe to this keyframe, so it's gonna change its position and over time. And basically what you get when you do that is you get an animation, which looks like this. So when you do that, you can see it looks it looks good, it's fine, but the thing is it's very linear. Its movement is very linear. It's just from point A to point B. Point A being this first keyframe and point B being this second keyframe here. It's just going from point A to point B with no sort of dynamics or any sort of change in velocity. And if you change the velocity, like let's say it moves faster, like right here, it's halfway to destination B since it's moved halfway from one keyframe to the next. 
what if you could change that to where it speeds up and right about here it's halfway to point B rather than here. And then it slows down and it gradually gets there. We can do that. The way we do that is we go down to this, we go over to this uh, drop down menu. And now you can see there's the graphs. They weren't there before, they're there now because we have keyframes. So if you select one of these keyframes, selects these pivot points here, you can't really see it. So these pivot points here, these can change the graph. And as you can see, it's changing it as I'm moving this. And depending on which way you uh, pull them, pull them up and it increases the velocity. And if you pull them down, then it decreases the velocity. And as you can see, if you move this a little bit, this um, icon here will change to like an hourglass type thing. That's just to tell you that it's um, changed. It's, it's got velocity controls now. One thing you can do is, let's say you wanted to change how this graph looks here, this curve. You could just pull this to the left or to the right. And it's that simple. I mean, you just, however you want this graph to look, you just have to move this the way you want it to. And what this will do is, let's say we put it here. Actually, this isn't right, right here, but I'm just gonna show you what this would do. Basically what this is gonna do is, it's gonna start moderately fast about what it was moving at before we added the uh, velocity changes um, in the graph editor. It's gonna move at normal pace and then it's gonna slow down a little bit. And then it's gonna gradually speed up. And then approximately around here, it's gonna be two times as fast, so it's gonna Start at normal speed, slow down, speed up, speed up, speed up, speed up, and then it's going to reach destination B, which is this keyframe right here. Now, that might not look very good because, as you can see, this is what it's supposed to be at right here. And then it dips down and then goes back up, which um, there's, a, there's a way to fix that, but um, that's not what you want. Uh, most of the time, it's not what you want. Sometimes it could be a pretty good effect, but that's not what we want here. So let's watch what this does. So as you can see, it kind of sped up there. It's moving a little bit slower, and then it speeds up at the end. And for some, this might look good. To me, it doesn't. I'd rather it, rather than speed up at the end, I want it to slow down at the end. So what we do there is we would go to this keyframe here. We would drop this down, and we would pull this pivot point all the way this way. And you see what it's doing? It is creating like this mountain thing here, this big hill thing. And uh, that's part of the graph that's telling you that right here, it's going to speed up a lot. So it's going to be normal here. It's going to speed up immediately. And then by that time, it's probably going to already be halfway there. And then the rest of the time, it's going to be slowing down like that. You saw it. Now, I don't know about you, but I like that a whole lot better. And you can actually make it look a lot cleaner if you just take this pivot point of this keyframe and pull it this way so it speeds up even closer to the beginning of the animation. We did that. It looks even cleaner. The difference between what I just did there and what this was, it's speeding up. It just stops immediately. Like it was moving fast and then boop, one second it's moving, and then it's just stopped. And I don't like that. I mean, it, it's, it looks good. To some, it might look good, but it, it's kind of basic this way. You want it to look nicer than that. So and do what I did before, which is this. And it like smoothly animates in and that looks pretty good if you ask me and why this is important is if you just get rid of these keyframes oh no i don't don't want to get rid of the keyframes if you just if you just have it straight like that like it was before it just it just looks so yeah compared to what i just did compared to what i just did before looking back at this does this look as nice i don't think so so yeah it just looks so much smoother and the reason it's important to use this is because it's just that it looks smoother it looks nicer it looks more professional and now that you know how to do it now that you've seen it actually in action i find it hard to believe you're gonna want to keep doing it the other way this is a technique that a lot of people use who are professionals and who actually make this stuff for a living uh stuff like lyric videos uh trailers and stuff uh, whenever they have text or videos or objects that they need to move in a certain way. And, uh, you know, those robotic linear movements don't really get the effect they, they're going for. They go into the velocity graphs. They go into those graph editors and they mess with the curves and they mess with the velocity to make things move the way they want them to move. And um, I, I might have shown, I might have put in an example at the beginning. 
I don't know, I probably will. An example of a, from a lyric video I made recently where I used the velocity editor a lot, like a lot. That was my entire video. Like that was the main thing that I was doing uh, that made the video look really nice. If I had all, all the animations just be like default, how they were before I changed the velocity on them, it would have looked a lot different to say the least. It would have looked a lot different from what it did uh, when I f finished it with the velocity uh, edits on it. So yeah, all you need to know is the basics. Everything else you just have to tinker with. Um, so if you want to use this, I don't know why you wouldn't want to use this after seeing what it does, but it's really nice. So now you know how to do that. And again, you can use it in Adobe After Effects and that's one thing, but using it, also being able to use it in Premiere Pro is really helpful. And if you didn't know how to use it before, you didn't even know it was there, you know now, so yeah. So hope this has been helpful. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.